At 6.58 a.m. this morning, Nanaimo RCMP received multiple 911 calls about shots being fired at the Western, products, Western Forest Products Mill in Nanaimo. Multiple police officers immediately responded, including emergency response team members, with the first officer arriving three minutes after the 911 call came in. A lone male suspect was arrested without incident a few minutes later by an emergency response team member. Police officers also quickly worked to search the building for additional threats and injured victims. No other suspects were found. This kind of tragedy leaves emotional scars that last much longer than the physical wounds. So we wanted to get some understanding of how people might be able to cope in the aftermath of this event and others like it. Joining us from our downtown studio, Councillor Eleni Petropoulos. Hi, Eleni. Hi. And on Skype from Victoria, Councillor Sarah Irons. There, thanks for joining us. Hi, Joe. Sarah, let's start with you. Uh, talk about the people who were there during the actual shooting. What might they experience in the coming days? Well, you know, one of the things that we know about trauma is that it really, um, the effects of it are, can be quite individual. So obviously there's some, um, some things that we might expect to see, um, and it's going to depend on the individual and how they respond to it. Some of the things you might expect for those people to be experiencing are a big range of emotions, you know, anything from grief, horror, anger, shock, um, any of those would be really understandable, mm -hmm. you know, something like this, yeah. Eleni, we know that four men were shot, two died, two have survived and are in hospital and are, are, we're hoping they'll both survive. Uh, talk to me about survivor's guilt because I would suspect you'd feel guilty for living when, when two of your colleagues were killed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the post-traumatic symptoms can be survivor's guilt where a person who did survive in the trauma, who witnessed the trauma, might say to themselves, you know, I could have done something to prevent this, or I should have. And so these thoughts tend to come up over and over again into the mind of these people. And so they feel these symptoms in their body. They have these thoughts. And then if they do have post-traumatic stress disorder, they might even feel guilty about you know, surviving it, saying, you know, I should have moved on from this now. I know it's a tragic event, but some people experience something even more tragic. Some people don't make it. And so I need to pass through this and I can't. Mm -hmm. So those how, are all components of the survivor's guilt. Yeah. How do you treat that? What do you say to them? You can treat that with trauma therapy. There's one specific one known as EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And it is a highly effective treatment for people who suffer from PTSD or traumatic events. The success rate is about 85%. And what it does is connect the negative beliefs, the thoughts, the charge that occurs during the trauma and the emotion. Connects those pieces and clears it out, clears out the trauma. So that sense of responsibility or that feeling of powerlessness that occurs during the trauma tends to subside. Mm -hmm. Sarah, is it possible that some people won't need any counseling at all? They won't even really need to talk about this? You know, that's a good question. And I think the answer is, yeah, it's possible. You know, one of the things that we know about trauma from research is that um, people who have, you know, who are unlucky in their early lives and had experienced a lot of trauma as children, they are more susceptible to experiencing trauma as adults. And people who had, you know, easier childhoods... Um, Cope be better, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, it may be that for some people who were present this morning, just some space and some time and the opportunity to talk about, talk about it with friends or family members or spouses or whatever, some time to grieve and kind of let that move through might be sufficient. And it, and it could easily be as well that for other people, um, that's not, you know, it's not that simple. And, you know, in those cases, I would recommend seeking out a trauma therapist to right. kind of just help. Right. Right. And uh, Eleni, it makes me wonder if, uh, you know, one of our guests earlier, Paul Doroshenko, suggested this is going to impact all of B.C. Is it possible there are people uh, in Prince George who tomorrow are going to be afraid to go to work? Um, I, I could see it impacting people, yes. There's sort of that awareness that comes about that 
could, you know, start at feelings of fear or anxiety that could develop. And so being aware of that, being mindful of it, and sort of finding tools to ground and reaching out and talking to safe people, people you trust, mental health professionals to help yourself cope with times of traumatic events that occur. Mm -hmm. uh, Eleni, is it possible this is going to bond that group of people who, who work together at that mill? Are they going to feel uh, that they survived a very difficult scenario as a group? Absolutely. That's been known to happen. When something traumatic does occur, it's something so emotionally charged that it can pull people together. Uh, an event like this is something that stays in people's memories because it's so grandiose. And so it can pull people together and, you know, in some ways that's great because it offers that support needed to, to get through this time of difficulty. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, what would you say to people tonight who, who are working at, who worked at that mail and are saying, I absolutely cannot go back to work there? Well, I mean, I would I would certainly validate the the fear and anxiety that's there because I think you know it's a very understandable feeling after going through something like this. And you know, maybe I would expect that someone who was who was uh, who was there this morning probably doesn't want to go back <laughs> tomorrow, and you mm -hmm. know, might need some space. And and to other people who are feeling anxious about you know, this possibly happening in their workplace. I mean, I think a dose of kind of thinking through the the, the, the likelihood, I guess, is what I mean. Um, you know, this isn't a common occurrence. And it's, and it's good to remember that. And it's also, I think, part of what makes something like this so shocking is the reminder that these kinds of things can happen and we're, we, you know, we're never immune. No, we, we aren't. And then, of course, if you watch the coverage all day on the newscast, uh, the news channel, it, it becomes part of, you know, what's on your brain and what you're thinking. And if you Absolutely. fall asleep, yeah, worried about it tonight, uh, uh, that's part of the problem. Ladies, I want to thank you both for joining us, Sarah Irons in Victoria and Eleni Petropoulos from downtown Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you.